Hi, this is Hope Kaya of SantaFeWebDesign.net and this is Dead on the Web Ignite Your Art site. So most art websites are dead on the web because they weren't optimized. They didn't take advantage of search engine optimization. Just briefly about me, I am a recovering search deadly web designer having been a furniture designer and a musician when I got into web design I was interested in the design aspect of it and not in the marketing aspect of it and I learned the hard way that it is an illu illusion to believe that if you build it they will come if you build a website nobody's gonna come unless you honor what people are already searching for and you include that in your website in a way that search engines can understand. But you have to decide if you want your website to be searchable or not to be searchable. Some websites aren't. And in other words, the search engines cannot find these sites and or they can't read them when they do find them. And that may be because these particular artists don't need to think about search engines and or they want to have control over who sees their website and or they want to protect their art. And you might have want to avoid search engines if you do want to protect your images from plagiary, if you want to be in control of who sees your work, or you don't want to deal with the public, just galleries or prospects you've already met. But if you do want people to find you and you want to protect your art, you should make your online images 72 dpi and I like to say 800 wide is about as big as you would ever want an image on the web by 600 pixels high. And I do a horizontal uh, example because the web monitors, monitors are horizontal. So if it's a vertical image I would just say that the maximum height should be 600 approximately. can be more but you might end up with some people with small laptops having to scroll vertically to see your whole image and that's awkward. You can also add watermarks if you want to be sure about people not being able to steal your work. So what is the making of a search deadly website? These are just some ways you can make a website so people can search engines can't find you or read you read your website. Flash layouts and flash is a an Adobe product that enables you to make a video style almost interactive website that um, can be extremely attractive uh, but can also be very hard to update and search engines can't read it. Frame set websites which I'll show you an example of that coming up. It's websites with no meta tags or no HTML text. All of these are very hard for search engines to deal with. Whereas a search friendly website, Dreamweaver uh, makes search friendly websites if you include the, the text that's needed for search engines to see what's on there. Same goes for Joomla, WordPress, Drupal, Blogger, and zillions of other systems. Uh, anything with HTML text with keyword phrases that your ideal client is searching for will help you. Meta tags with the same keyword phrases that your ideal client is looking for will help you. Navigation that's done with HTML, and I'll show you all of this uh, with keywords, will help you. And text with keywords. So this is an example of a Flash website. It's really wonderful and quite amazing. Uh, I recommend you go look at it. Um, and search engines cannot read the content of this. It's extremely extensive, huge, with tons of information and videos and um, so on. And it's brilliant and I'm sure these people did not care wh whether search engines could, f could read their site because they p were, you know, interested in this type of design. Now you might not know if your site is searchable or not. Um, and what you want to do, and I'll show you examples of this too, is try to highlight the text with your cursor. Um, and if you're not sure whether that's working, but you, you wanna you'll see what I'm what I do next, but um, 
You can view the source of your web page and see if the text that's visible on the page is also visible in the source. And I'll show you that. Now here's an example of a site with HTML text. See where I can highlight Santa Fe Sculpture Artist and um, I can actually highlight the navigation also. It takes me a minute to get that working, but um, you see how there's a navigation link that says Metal Art Portfolio? That's really good because that is text that search engines can read and it's linking to a page that's optimized for that phrase, meaning it's linking to a section that's op that has that phrase as the title. Now if you choose View Source or View Page Source, you'll see the source code that goes into making your website or any other website. This is public information, it's not um, private. So when you go to the, the text at the top in between the tag called the head tag, the opening tag and the closing tag, this is all designed for search engines. But the reader can't see any of this except the title tag. And you can see Santa Fe Metal Artist in the title tag for Destiny. Now once you get below that head tag, then readers and viewers can see the text that's, that's here. And, when, and that's ideal when you have keywords in both the head tag where search engines can see and the text where viewers can see written in a way that search engines can see, which we just tested. And you can rewind this video if you need a reminder of how this works. Now, I'm, I'm doing the same thing looking at the source code for the Flash site I showed you a little while ago. Um, and everything in red is inside the head tag. So search engines can read it, but they're actually, and, and they're not going to pay too much attention to it because there's no text on the website that viewers can read that search engines can read as well. So nothing below that head tag has keywords in it that, that viewers can read and the search engines can read. If the search engines could read it, you'd see it here. So the fact that there are dozens and dozens of pages on this Flash website with tons of text doesn't mean anything in terms of its searchability for search engines. Uh, so I'm just giving you a clue, and you can see where it says flash in here that, um, you know, right here, that uh, it's a flash site and they're not searchable. And I got deeper into that site and I tried to select some of the text, and, and it might kind of look like it's being highlighted because that little shadow's showing up, but in truth, like I'm right clicking, I'm trying to copy it, it doesn't work. Uh, whereas, if I go into a blog for Destiny Allison and I highlight it, you can see that I can highlight it and I can copy it and I can paste it into a text uh, file. Now, you don't have to go this far to test it. As long as you can highlight it, you'll know that search engines can read it. I'm just dem demonstrating here. I pasted uh, that text in there so you know search engines can read it. And that particular job, by the way, Three months after it was built, uh, the, the website paid for itself because some people came into Santa Fe and Googled the phrase Santa Fe Metal Art. The blog came up linking to her website and, and the website paid for itself that weekend. Okay, so this is an example of a frame, frame set, which also is search deadly. Uh, uh, Danny Lehman is a brilliant photographer and he wanted and asked for a website that search engines would not read. You can, you can get a sense of whether something is built in a frame set if you go into it and you scroll vertically and part of the web page stays static and doesn't move. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's a frame set, but it'll give you a clue. So what you can do is choose view source. And if you see that word frame set there, you know it's a frame set and you know that search engines can't read the text in there. Now another search deadly technique is to have no meta tags. Jeff Koons is extremely famous, doesn't need to worry about search engines, uh, but he d obviously didn't because the title of his homepage is Untitled Document, 
When you make a page in Dreamweaver and you don't give it a title, Dreamweaver gives it a title of Untitled Document. If you were to search in Google for Untitled Document, there would be 14 million results. Jeff Koons is number two because he's so famous, but it of course does not help him to be number two for this particular search for untitled document because nobody's going to search for that when they're looking for art or